Hello and welcome to Huddersfield Town Extra Time. I'm delighted to be joined by Dave Hartrick of Opta and the Examiner and Andy Lawson, who is the breakfast host for Like One. Um, thanks again to, to Sports Broker as well for, for sponsoring the show before I forget that and get told off. Um, I'm desperate to get into this game, lads, because um, that was an outstanding performance from, from where I was at. We, we seem to you know, deserve that and, and the performance didn't really get the the results it deserved. Dave, am I being dramatic and, and biased or is, is that the way you saw it as well? No, I thought, it was, yeah, I thought it was a good game. I thought it was a very good town performance. I thought they were very solid. I thought they just missed a little bit of, of luck. Um, I think it was, it could have gone another way, a different referee. It might have gone another way, but we'll uh, we'll get into that. But it was, as nil-nil goes, I thought it was a really entertaining game as well. I thought it was a really, yeah. really good game. Um, so, yeah, very positive. It, it, it's nice to sort of go into that Fulham game next week, which feels like a bit of a free hit with a nice bounce off a game like that, really. Yeah, it was the, the complete opposite, Andy, of what a, a 12 that he feels like to me. Often they're quite flat and they just fizzle out and, and you know, really are a bit of a you know, non-event. But this was the, the complete opposite. It was... 100 mile per hour from, from kick one and it was town that seemed to, to take the initiative and, and we didn't lose the initiative We the three of us have, have sat on this show before now at home after a draw and said that you know town did really well and then tailed off a little bit but there was no tailing off today it was uh, far improved from previous draws I think yeah, an excellent, excellent performance. I think the TV company will be delighted that they decided to, uh, to put us on with that one. A good, good, solid Yorkshire derby, first of all. I thought both teams gave 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 a lot in that. But I also feel like, yeah, you're right about town. I feel like town, the first moment or two, maybe we did look a little bit nervy, but we took control of that game. We really then showed Sheffield United what we can do. Those attacking players, Danny Ward showing he's the perfect target man at the moment. If you look at the pace and things that Sorba Thomas has as well you look at what we brought into that game we were on that all the way through Dave mentioned the luck word I'm going to say if we'd have had a bit more luck today uh, yeah I feel like that that's a superb performance we could have got the three points but I have to be happy with the point that we've got Dave before we get into the nitty gritty of the game I want to start at before kickoff when you saw the team because for me when I heard about the team I was equal parts enthused and a little bit not worried, but not sure of what was to come because it was it was extremely attacking. The shape was more fluid than it has been previously. John Russell came into the side. Josh Ruffles came into the side. Josh Karuma came into the side. Pippa came into the team. It was far different. And obviously, the fact that Preston was less than 72 hours ago, or whatever it was, will, will play massively into that. But it was very attacking, very confident, and, and a lot different to, to what town have been lining up at recently. How did you feel when you saw the, the team sheet? Um, I think the question mark was Russell for me. I, 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 the, the other changes, you know, Ruffles is a really, really good player. and Like the highest compliment you can pay him is like he came in today and there was absolutely no difference to a Harry Toffolo performance, was there really? He was, he was really good. It was that deployment of Russell in midfield that was the, the interesting one because... There's there's a lot of things he can do, but he he doesn't he's not a pacey midfielder, so he's not going to drive you out. So it was quite a sort of indication in how Town wanted to set up, and I think it was risky. I think it was bold, uh, but it was good to see because I think there's been other games where they could have been a bit bolder where they haven't. And yeah, it was I was a bit like you to be perfectly honest with you. It was a slight mix of. I really want this to go right, but there's always that sort of slight knife edge that if it goes wrong, the wheels really could come off, but it works. It works. And I always prefer town on the front foot from the off. And you go back to games like, you know, the two Reading games, uh, Blackburn here, various others. I always think they look better when they just roll the dice and go attacking from the off. And you can't yeah. do it in every game in the championship. You can't because yeah. there's such a range of opposition and the games come so thick and fast. So it's not something you can just set your stall out and do all the time unless you pull and pay and strike at £90,000 a week and stuff. So, But I thought ultimately it proved to be the right decision because not many teams go out Sheffield United. Why not? They're, they're human, you know. It's Rocky versus yeah. Drago, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think I said to you, and I'll be perfectly honest in this because I was completely wrong. I said, I think one of these teams are getting paddled today and I can't tell who. And it wasn't that case at all. But 
I think it, it, had Town got one, or even perhaps even Sheffield United, they would have gone on to get two and three. But it was just that that one that was elusive. And like you say, that that Russell selection was interesting, but it, it seems to make more tactical sense once we saw what Jonathan Hogg was doing, dropping in and make it a bit more of a three when he was off the ball. And that was really intelligent use of him. And, and you know, another tick in the box for, for his late development. You know, you know, he's played so many games, but he's still showing more of his, his game than he ever has done before, Jonathan Hogg. So, you know, that's brilliant to see. Andy, what about yourself? How did you feel as a resident town fan when you saw that team? Were you infused? Were you worried? Because the responses we were getting on social media, people were, were loving the look of, of how Carlos was going. I think I've always got a feel infused when I'm seeing a Huddersfield Town team really looking to, to go at another team, really show an opposition what, what we can do. We've spoken on Extra Time, Raj, about how we know now this season we are defensively sound. So we have that uh, that, that ability. We've, we know that that's all right. So we can now push forward. We can do these things. Uh, honest answer being when, when I saw like Johnny Russell's name on the team sheet, I know about him. I am aware of him, but I've never really had an opportunity to properly see what he can do. Wow. Um, okay, so <laughs> literally, like those first those first touch passes, he knows where everybody is. He knows where the open space is on the pitch, and he is able to get the ball to that position without what seems to be batting an eyelid. Add in the physical presence of him, the fact as well that he was able to put the ball in the back of the net. I mean, you look at him and you think, that is a footballer. And you look at, again, how he's come into the club as well in recent times. The recruitment team have to take a lot of credit for that. And as you mentioned as well, like the Ruffles as well coming in and Pippa uh, coming in. I was I was really enthused going into today and, and, and I'm excited by what I saw very much. Yeah, it's it, like you said, the recruitment team deserve huge credit for that. But it's a great example of, of what Town are doing really well. Obviously, those, those things you pointed out will have been helped by his time at Cobham with Chelsea, but those finishing touches that he's, he's had, added to him at Town in the B team and everything will have put him in a position to play today and, and put in the performance he did today. You mentioned the, the big talking point. Dave will come to, to you first on this one. Uh, a disallowed goal, unfortunately. It was, it was given as a, a foul by Danny Ward. Uh, it didn't seem that way on the, the replay to me. No. It, the, the thing is, it's a slightly complicated one because you could argue that the goal should not be given because Danny Ward ultimately is in an offside position, right? But why is he in an offside position? And that's because he's been pulled into that offside position. So if you don't give the goal, then I think you have to give the penalty because it's not a foul either because he's been pulled to the deck himself. So all the goalkeeper has done is take the step backwards and gone over him. I think, like... I hate going on about referees. It's a really, really difficult job. Really difficult job. But the linesman's got to give him a little bit of help there. He's looking right across at it. And looking back on the replays, it wasn't one where I honestly think it was that difficult, if I'm brutally honest. Um, you know, there are a lot of... There was another one on John Russell that was fairly marginal. The corner comes in, he gets pulled. It was a penalty by VAR, but, you know, without VAR, the referee has to look somewhere and he can't cover the hole in the box. It's not going to get given. The Pipple one later on, that's another Stonewall penalty. I have no idea why that is given, and that, for me, is even worse than the disallowed goal. But the goal itself, it, it's just... I don't know what... <sighs> I don't know how you look at that instant and you look at all the moving parts. Danny Ward getting pulled to the floor, the goalkeeper going over him, John Russell scoring the head, uh, Ward being in offside position, and you come to the conclusion that it's a foul. <laughs> I, just, I, I honestly don't really get it, but there you go. And I think some days you can, you can defend some decisions. I don't really think that was very defendable, but you know... There is another side to this that I think we have to mention. And Town have got away with a couple recently, and I'm not going to go through the incidents, but they have got away in very recent history with a couple. Football is all about karmic balance. These things usually do come around and even themselves up one way or another. So perhaps today that's what we saw. Is it a fresh slate going forward, though, do you think, Dave? <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> 
Touch wood. But I, I couldn't sum it up any better than that myself, Andy. Obviously, it's, it's disappointing when you, you come to the end of what was, I think, one of our, our most positive performances of the season against an extremely good, very talented side that you know, have so many... Premier League level, you know, quality players within them that we're having to discuss decisions, and I don't want to hang around on that too much because there are other great performances in there. Lee Nichols again made a miraculous save that I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much he knew about making it, but he, he did um, from an excellent John Fleck strike, which was probably Sheffield United's best chance of the game, and and I think that that defensive unit again, and, and you know, Jonathan Hogg as well, and. The, Josh Ruffles and everyone, the way they played while still being attacking and, and limiting Sheffield United's uh, chances is something that I think Carlos is going to be extremely pleased with and, and they can be extremely pleased with another unit. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Raj. I think that if you if you look at how we restricted Sheffield United in that first half, there were a couple of crosses came in from both wings, but largely we had them really um, under control. Then in that second half, yeah, all right, the last 10 minutes or so, they started to really push forward. And as you say, Lee Nichols for me is somebody who I've got absolute confidence in. If there is a ball to be plucked out of the air, or if there is a save to make, you know that Lee Nichols is going to get it. It's going to take something like a deflection or so to take it away from him. So the fact that he's making saves as he is, I actually don't want to take away from him the the incredible skills of that save, but I've got confidence that he's going to do that, but that shouldn't remove the brilliance of what he actually did there. So I feel like, yeah, there is that that extreme confidence that he can pull us out of anything. But as we've discussed, that, that defensive unit, no matter who's in it at the moment, it's impressive. And you look at the fact that we can put Pippa in it today and, um, Josh, uh, and Ruffles in it as well. And you, you look at that and go, yeah, we didn't suffer for any changes today. We still looked defensively really solid. Yeah, Dave... I want to get slightly nerdy with you, uh, with the changes, um, because to me it seemed like a, a slight 180 on how the approach to the game went. Usually we we start with our, our players who are slightly more comfortable in possession and, and keeping hold of the ball. Um, but as the game goes on, the likes of Dwayne Holmes, Daniel Sanani, they get more tired, they need to be substituted, and that's when in the last quarter of the game, perhaps, Town have suffered a little bit with those more comfortable ball players not being on the field. The game slightly, you know, the control goes away from them. Today, we flipped that on its head. Dwayne and, and Danel, for no other reason than tactical, I think, were, you know, were put on the bench. We went with Karoma, Thomas, Pippa, players who are more inclined to attack all out, um, better on the, the break, perhaps more all out attackers. Mm-hmm. And then we were able to later on in the game introduce Danelle, introduce Dwayne, you know, with the options of even Corral Lighting on the bench as well, and and manage to to keep the the game under the control for the full ninety minutes. Do you think that's something that was obviously purposefully done, and and, and the intention of of picking this team, or, or one of the intentions of picking this team? Yeah, definitely. I think what was what was noticeable to me was that rather than town can be a little. It, slowing the build up and that's by design because Carlos Goran likes control that's what he's all about control the ball and what was different today is that Hoggy was dropping back and Russell plays a little bit deeper so you had a gap and you, you have to make a decision then what you're going to do whether you're going to try and put somebody into that 10 space or whether you're just going to leave Lewis O'Brien to patrol the whole area or, or what you're going to do and what they tried to do was play a little bit out of back and then they would get to a certain point and basically just play it a little bit longer than usual to try and break the press to try mm-hmm. and get past what is a very very tight Sheffield United defence by the way they I think that's what seven goals they've conceded in 11 games now they are they are tough to play against and time and time again the town were within you know an inch a whisker of just getting that final ball over the top and getting Sorber in getting players into space and it's just another way of space creation on the pitch that I think you have to give Corbin a, quite a bit of credit today because he had the courage to go with that team selection and he had the courage to go with a slightly different approach to the game and I think some of the criticism he's had in the past has been when people have said he's sort of too set in his ways and this season one of the big parts of this season is Town's adaptability and how they they do play different formations in and out of positions, even in and out certain game situations, laying a 
Carlos Corbett team out in a 4-3-3 is utterly pointless because they never, ever stay in that formation. So, yeah, I thought it was a really solid tactical performance. And I thought the plan, you know, on another day, the plan works. That's the thing on another yeah. day. And I think... Or, or, right. or Tino Andrin's fit as well, and, and you throw him into yeah. the mix as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you get... Say that goal is allowed first half, or you get the penalty first half, mind you. I think Town would rather have the goal than the penalty with their record. <laughs> but they go one nil up, and I think you're exactly right. Sheffield United were... It was a good sort of parry and repost type of game, but you can't keep Sheffield United quiet for the whole game because they're a very good side. So you may as well have a go and you may as well try and break the pass. You may as well try and create a bit of space. And as I said, it was fine margins today. That's what it was, fine margins. And another day, Town could have got a nice 2-0 win out of that and we would have been absolutely delighted. As it is, I think we're all just very, very happy, which is a nice place to be, really. Yeah, I think I said on our half-time tweet that if that were a, a, a boxing match rather than football, then Town would be well ahead on points. But fortunately, that's not the way they score things in, in our game. Um, Andy, I wanted to talk to you about some players that I think we, we might be in danger of taking for granted a little bit because they don't always come up. Uh, and perhaps they should is, is, you know, Matty Pearson, Tom Lees and then Lewis O'Brien especially. I think those three are such regular pieces of, of town spine this season and we don't often you know single them out unless they've scored or, or done something miraculous but they are so dependable and so good no matter the system that town play no matter what they're asked to do they've been excellent gaming game out. and today with another example of that for those three yeah, as you say, very dependable, very consistent players, and I think I think actually you're you're totally right to to bring them up, Raj, because you're right. They can sometimes get forgotten about because we assume that the level that they're playing at is the level that's kind of the accepted norm for them. But it's brilliant. It's a really high level. If you look at any of the names you mentioned, you know that if there's a fifty fifty to win, they are going to win it. You know that the headers they're going to come and clear them. What whatever it is, and the fact that you've got that solidity and the defence, the fact you've got that Lewis O'Brien will chase down everything, it allows the other players that freedom on the pitch, it allows you, John Russell today, to, to have that little gap just to play that first touch pass, that kind of stuff, it's it can't be taken for granted and you're so right, it's really easy to do so but I feel like, yeah, it's a good opportunity to flag up that without them, the three you mentioned and the other consistent players, we are in a completely different place. We are where we are because we have that consistency and players like that in our side. Yeah, massively, especially with you know Levi Colwell not there. Those two have, have stepped up at the back. Um, Lewis filled in at left back for periods today and didn't look out of place. He was he was excellent there as he is in midfield. He, when he's pushed higher as he as he played in midweek against Preston, he's brilliant. So you know there's a reason why those three are uh, you know some of the first names on the on the team sheet each week and and they deserve as, as much praise as anyone. Uh, Dave, you've mentioned Fulham already next week, and you, I think you called it a free hit. But with the atmosphere around the club, that's 14 games unbeaten in, in all competitions. Um, the way that the, the fans and the, the team seem to be, you know, united and, and won at the minute, stranger things have happened, haven't they? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And the thing is, Town quite often have one of these results this season. You know, I'm thinking of like away wins at Brentford and various other games you can point to. It's very doable. Fulham are not a Death Star. You know, they have several <laughs> sort of sports you can aim for. And other teams have, have done been through their sort of real peak as well, where they were just like, they went through that sort of month of just battering teams for fun. And teams are getting a little bit tighter, a little more controlled. And I think the key thing is you have to be realistic. So you have to know if you leave space and if you leave gaps, Fulham have got plenty of players who are quite happy to just drift into them and, and they will hurt you. But I think the difference is, I think it's a free hit in terms of town don't really have anything to fear because they're playing well. They believe in themselves. You can see that. They have superb defensive stability. They have a spine of a team that won't let them down. Yeah. That's not a bad place to start, really, going into any game, regardless of what the opposition is. Yeah, they, they might not 
you know, be a Death Star, but I think they've got the resources to build one if they wanted to, which is yeah. why they're running away with the league the way they are. And, you know, fair play to them. The, the, the management there is excellent and the, the team there are excellent, but Town are, are going into that game, Andy, as, as well as we possibly can be and, and feeling as, as well as we possibly can be. Yourself as a, as a fan, the way that this momentum is building, the way that this the, the feeling around the club's building, is that something that, that you're really proud and happy to be part of? Oh, very much. Yeah, absolutely. That that wording is perfect. Proud and and delighted to be a part of with, with town. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm I adore town, love town, and I know as well that with as Dave was saying, I suppose yes, town can pull off results like like you know a good one against Fulham next week. You have to look at Fulham, and you know all Star Wars references aside, they they are just absolutely incredible. <laughs> you know? Um, I think for me. If in a week's time we are having a conversation where we've had a result the same as today with the kind of thing where we've been, oh, gutted about our luck or whatever, I take that now. And now I know that we can get the result there. I am the eternal optimist, you know that. Um, but if we can be in the same position next week, I, I do take that. And a good performance again from town, a nil-nil draw or something, get a point, Crevet Cottage, carry on then with the card if the Birmingham games... Uh, and look at those and again continue this run because as you say it's 14 15 games now that we're on i mean it, it it's incredible and what a time it is to be a town fan just at the minute yeah um and i completely agree with you so thank you very much you two to, for your time there are still tickets available i think for fulham away and especially cardiff in a week and a half time on a, on a wednesday night tickets are only a five or so Get down, get behind the lads, fill that ground up. It's half term, so bring your kids who don't need to be in bed early that night um, and get behind them because these, these lads deserve it as much as anyone at the minute, I think. So so pack it out and, and get behind them in good voice. Uh, thank you, you two, for your time. Thanks as ever to, to Sportsbrook for sponsoring the show and we'll be back with you later on in the week to, to preview that trip to Craven Cottage. <laughs>